Hey guys, welcome back to Vlogmas. So today I am filming another gin review for you. I'm trying to like make them a little bit shorter because they are quite long videos. Um, they're not the most popular here, but I feel like I have to finish making them now. Um, so the next lot are days 17, 18, 19 and 20. Obviously there's gonna be four more after that, but I have no filming days left now before Christmas. It's the 23rd. Um, I'm not going to be around tomorrow evening. I'm not going to be filming on Christmas Day. So I will film that at some point between Christmas Day and New Year, if not the first week, week of the new year. So without further ado, let's just start this vlog. Uh, apologies for the hoodie. Um, I've tried to make this as festive as possible. Got my flashing Christmas tree earrings on and my Christmas tree background. So the first gin we're going to talk about is another Sip Smith gin. And this one was the Lemon Drizzle Gin. Oh my days, so yummy. Absolutely lovely. I love lemony flavoured gins. I really like Sip Smith, the brand I've discovered. Um, I talked about Sip Smith before on one of my gin reviews. So I will try and card that up here somewhere for you. Um, so we're just going to go straight onto the Sipsmith website and talk about this amazing gin. So it's Zesty Lemonis that dials up the citrus. Inspired by citrus gins from the early 1900s, Sipsmith take their classic London dry gin, a layer on sweet sun-dried lemon peel, lemon verbena and vapour infused fresh lemons, top with tonic for a refreshingly light and bright g and um, So its botanicals are lemon verbena. Our lemon verbena brings sweet, fresh citrus flavours reminiscent of the finest lemons. Um, it's got, the botanicals are and also the Indian vanilla pods. Vanilla pods give uh, the biscuity sweetness that you would expect from the very finest lemon drizzle cake. Uh, juniper berries, obviously, it's quite a fundamental botanical and a lot of gins, as we have found out on this gin journey. Um, so on the nose, it's a glaze of biscuity sweetness with an unmistakably citrus twist. So yeah, it didn't like scream lemon, as in like, if you bit into a lemon, you'd know about it and you'd be like, Shh. it was definitely like a sweet lemon rather than the bitter sour lemon. So on the palette, it's fresh, zesty, warming, zing, and an underlying hint of vanilla. Like I said, it's more leaning on the sweet side. And the finish, a light and bright, warm and licorice laced finale. I couldn't taste the licorice in it, but I would definitely, definitely buy this again, 100%. So the next gin was, again, from, it's from a brand that I've had in this advent calendar, but this is the, uh, the second one of it, I think. So this is from the Lakes Distillery, um, and this is the Rhubarb and Rosehip Gin Liqueur um, in a really pretty pink bottle, but it's one of those bottles that's got like the plastic wrapper on the outside. Um, not a fan of that, but um, again, I've talked about the Lakes Distillery before. I'll leave the cards to the video that it's in. Um, let's talk about this particular gin anyway. So I find, I find, I'm pretty sure I said this last time, but I find the Lakes Distillery website really quite hard to use. So we're just gonna read the description of the gin as if you were going to buy it from their shop online. A delicious rhubarb and rosehip gin liqueur made with the award-winning Lakes Gin. Rhubarb and rosehip extract is carefully combined with the Lakes Gin, a classic dry gin with a delicate mix of traditional gin botanicals. The Lakes Rhubarb and Rosehip Gin Liqueur provides a delicate, delicate, fruity, yet floral fragrance. This sophisticated pale pink addition to our Lakes Distillery flavoured liqueurs delivers a well-rounded and beautiful taste experience. Try it with a cloudy apple press or, a, or drop in Prosecco. 
Um, so I really enjoyed this. Considering it was a pink gin, I thought it did quite well. I definitely was getting those floral note throughs rather than really fruity notes, which was nice as well. And considering, um, you know, I like the Violet gin, which is a floral gin. Um, what other gins have I liked that are quite, quite floral? Um, but yeah, I really, I, I enjoyed it. And for a gin, a gin liqueur, which we've established is not really my thing, I would definitely have this again. De yeah, I like the fact that it was like rhubarb and rosehip rather than rhubarb and ginger. Um, despite this being rhubarb, I actually quite liked it. Um, whereas like rhubarb is definitely something that I've learned is on right on the bottom of my preference list of things to choose from with regards to flavours. So for that, I think it did quite well. Um, the next gin that we got is a JJ Whitley, JJ Whiteley, don't really know how to pronounce it. And this is a pink cherry gin, um, which I've never heard of before. I think I've said this in one of my other vlogs. Um, I've heard of like red cherry, black cherry, but I've never really heard of pink cherry. So that was nice to receive. And I think it was slightly pink in color as well. So again, I've talked about JJ Whiteley on one of my other vlogs. So I'll try and link that with a card, um, but we'll go onto their website and see what they have to say about this particular gin. So it's a 38.6% gin. Uh, JJ Whitley Pink Cherry Gin bursts with a flavour and joins the JJ Whitley family with its inspired by flavours from British countryside. Um, a beautifully versatile gin that makes for a delicious twist on the G&T or cocktail. Tasting notes, a sugary stone fruit with fresh orange almonds aroma with its initial sweetness leading into marzipan, sour cherry and juniper on the palate. The finish is smooth with cherry almond and a little lingering spice. So yeah, it is, it was nice. It's not like a flavor of gin that I've ever tried before. It's extremely girly, extremely enjoyable. And considering I don't normally like a pink gin, this was really nice because it wasn't pink strawberry or pink raspberry or any type of berry. It was a cherry, um, which is just something different. Uh, can't really smell the fruit either. I find stuff that sort of like smells quite potent um, of fruit is not as great as tasting. It's weird. But anyway, that's lovely. Definitely would have again, but I've never seen it sold. I've only ever seen their Violet Gin, which is my absolute favourite from them so far. And then finally was another Edinburgh Gin. Yes, that's right. Another Edinburgh Gin. Um... And it was the Christmas gin, which I've been begging for. I was hoping it would come um, and I happened to open it on a day that I wasn't actually vlogging, which I was really gutted about, but I have told you about it since. Um, small batch distilled in Scotland, frankincense and myrrh. Um, so we'll go on to the Edinburgh Gin website. I've told you about Edinburgh Gin in another review of mine. So I will try and link the card. So this gin of theirs, this it's actually a gin gin and not a liqueur. So this is a 43% a proof gin. Um, our Christmas gin promises perfume and warming aroma from frankincense, sweet flavour from myrrh, followed by a lingering spice from cinnamon and nutmeg. The true spirit of the festive season, our Christmas gin is flavoured with an array of unique botanicals, defined by spice aromatic notes of frankincense and myrrh and classic juniper. This makes for a warming gin, either to sip or to mix with. Rich aromas include zesty sweet orange, while a finishing note of nutmeg adds comfort in Yuletide warmth. Bottled at 43% ABV, Christmas gin can be enjoyed in a festive gin and tonic with orange garnish, complementing the gin's complex flavours and aromas. It also works perfectly in a Negroni, ne Negroni, I don't know what that is. Um, the sweet myrrh provided balance to the Campari's bitter finish. So on the nose, you've got perfumed and warming aroma of frankincense. On the palate, you've got the initial sweet notes and the full mouth feel from myrrh and the finish lingering spice to finish from cinnamon and nutmeg. So do you know what this reminds me of? Um, it definitely has 
a taste in it, but it's not, oh, I can really taste that. You sort of have to work hard and concentrate on getting those flavors through on your palette. So this reminds me of the second gin that I had in this advent calendar, which was that Oriental gin, Opia. Um, these, that, that's quite similar, I would say. It's very reminiscent to that. Um, nevertheless, I enjoyed this gin. Um, it was nice to actually have a gin from Edinburgh Gin rather than one of their liqueurs. Um, it's, I would say it's a reasonably um, nice thing to give as a gift around Christmas time. If you know you've got somebody who's a gin drinker, the fact that it's a Christmas gin is just, that's cute. Um, there's nothing not to like about it, but I wouldn't say it's anything special or, or anything wow to sort of rave about. So if I received it, I'd be really chuffed because I'd, I'd love it, I'd drink it, I'd enjoy it, but I wouldn't go seeking for it because I know there's other gins out there that I would have as a higher preference, if that makes any sense. So out of all the four of these, the strongest winner by absolute far is the Sip Smith Lemon Drizzle Gin. I would definitely have that again in an absolute heartbeat. And then the next gin that I would choose out of these four would be the Pink Cherry Gin. Um, you know I'm not really a liqueur girl. I enjoy them, but I wouldn't go out and choose one. And then this was just too generic to make it anything special. So these two um, are bloody brilliant. I'm quickly going to do for you a sort of like unboxing of the rest of my advent calendar just so I don't leave you hanging um, on what the rest of them are. So yesterday, which was the day after my staff Christmas party, I opened my gin but I could not bear the thought of actually drinking it. I was had a slight hangover and just didn't feel like I needed to add any more alcohol into my system because I'd had quite a lot the night before. So this is the gin that I opened yesterday on the 22nd of December. It's called a Rock and Rose Premium Scottish Gin and it's got Scottish botanicals in it. I've never heard of this brand so I was extremely happy to have opened something that I've never tried, never heard of because then I like reading up about it as well. I like trying new things so that looks really interesting then we're gonna open today's which is the 23rd oh it's another sip smith one how exciting i didn't think there would be any more oh so it's the sip smith slow gin and this is a 29 percent volume one so somewhere in between a liqueur and an actual full-bodied gin um I like the slow gin liqueur that I had from the Lakes Distillery brands, which has kind of put me back in the mood for slow gins because that is something that's more um, something that you drink around Christmas time. So I'm looking forward to trying that. Um, I'm looking at it and going, boy, that looks really strong, but we shall see. So that's tonight's gin. I'm not gonna drink all of these tonight. I might take some of them um, and leave them for Christmas day. And then the last gin of this advent calendar is gonna be number 24, which is down here. And this one is, wow, I've not even heard of this one. Oh no, Farm Born British Gins. It's a Warner's Gin and it's a raspberry gin. Oh no, it looks actually really nice. It's got a very strong raspberry red color to it, but raspberry flavored stuff is totally on the bottom of my list. Um, it says it's jammy, fruity, and sweet. So maybe if I do some research and actually mix it with something like lemonade instead of tonic water, I might enjoy it a bit more. I will have it, I will drink it, and I'm sure I will enjoy it, but the thought of having something raspberry is the last thing that I want to be drinking right now. So guys, that is every single door opened on my gin advent calendar. I will do a future review, obviously about those last four gins that I haven't reviewed. You'll just have to wait a little bit for it. And within that review, I think I'll review this as a whole. I'll keep the packaging. I'll talk about where I bought it from, how much it costs, if I thought it was value 
for money etc like that so make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click the little notification bell if you want to hear all about that i'm certainly happy overall i would say um as a little sort of like spoiler for you but yeah if you like this video guys please give it a massive thumbs up and i shall see you all soon have a very very merry christmas um and a happy new year i'm not sure how long i'm gonna be gone away for now but i hope that you have enjoyed my vlogmas um i might try and film little clips here and there of my Christmas day, my boxing day, um, and my New Year's in between. It does depend on what I'm up to though. So again, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. Thank you so much for watching. It means the absolute world to me and I will definitely see you all soon. Bye guys. <laughs>